Welcome back to National Geographic Today with Susan Rosgen and Tom Foreman. Giant kelp is a type of seaweed, and in many places it has proven to be a particularly delicate type of seaweed. Changes in sea temperature have a devastating effect on this essential ocean plant, and no one knows quite why. But now scientists and a guy with an amazing idea in his garage are figuring out how to repair the damage. We turn now to the California coast, to Monterey Bay, where biologist Ernie Kovacs has our oceans report. <laughs> Giant kelp is one of the most productive plants in the world. This stuff can grow as much as a foot and a half in one day. But kelp can also be fragile. In fact, along the Los Angeles and Orange County coastlines, the kelp forests have disappeared and they don't seem to be able to recover. We're going to go take a look at a group that's trying to bring these kelp beds back to life. But first, let's go for a dive and see why kelp forests are often considered the rainforests of the sea. Diving inside the three-dimensional world of a kelp forest is spectacular. Overhead, schools of fish swim through the canopy. Down below, the forest floor is crawling with amazing creatures. Everywhere you look, you're literally surrounded by life. Kelp forests have a great diversity of animals living in them, a tremendous variety of fishes, many of which are of either commercial or sport fishing importance, and are real hot spots in terms of the amount of biological activity going on there. Just offshore of Crystal Cove State Park, about four miles south of Newport Harbor, is a one-acre site named Wheeler's Reef, where the Orange County Coast Keepers have begun replanting a kelp forest. Orange County used to be lined with kelp, but the last of it disappeared during a strong El Nino in the early 1980s. The unusually warm water devastated the kelp, and though that was nearly 17 years ago, the kelp beds still show no signs of recovery. Biologist Mike Curtis has fond memories of these areas. I think it was one of the brighter memories of my childhood was those early days in my teenage years when we would uh, skin dive on these coastlines. These areas were covered with just these beautiful, lush kelp beds, and they were like these cathedrals almost. It's kind of sad to see that uh, these kelp beds are not here anymore. But the coast keepers are determined to get these kelp forests back. Their ultimate goal is to reforest the entire 42-mile coastline of Orange County. The best thing about this approach to restoration is its simplicity. Gordon Lehman developed this system, and the critical first step takes place in his garage. This is where the restoration project begins, and it's really a simple process. What we've done is taken the reproductive leaves off of the kelp plants, and we've shocked them and caused them to give off millions of spores, and millions of spores in just this little area. They're very, very concentrated. Here we have a tray of tile in stagnant water. You take and pour this solution of spores. After about a week, it'll start looking something like this. Start seeing little spots all over it where the plants are starting to grow. Then in 30 to 60 days, we take and put it out in the ocean where we start growing plants. After three to four weeks hanging in the ocean water, fingernail-sized plants start to appear, and the tiles are ready for planting. To attach the tiles to the reef, divers simply strap them down with rubber bands, and dozens of tiles can be planted in one dive. On the next dive, Gordon led me to a test site, where he's been putting tiles out on the reef for the past nine months. I was amazed to see giant kelp plants growing out of bathroom tile. The plants at the test site now are uh, running a few centimeters high up to about 14, 16 feet high. I think it's the tallest one. We're kind of hoping to have the kelp be up to a canopy maybe by uh, three or four months. But the big challenge is to keep the new plants from being eaten. Giant kelp's a favorite food of urchins, snails, and even a few types of fish. 
From the moment a tile's attached to the reef, danger lurks in every crack and crevice. It's just like working with a garden here. You plant the garden, you don't leave it unattended. You have to go back because there's pests and things that move into the garden. Well, we have the same problem with our transplants out in the ocean. There's pests that move in, and our particular pest we're concerned about is the sea urchins. The sea otter kept a lot of the urchins in check here. They, they had prodigious uh, appetites, and one of their favorite foods was the sea urchins. With the predators like sea otters gone and the constant threat of future El Ninos, will Orange County ever get its kelp forests back? Dr. Wheeler North has been studying these kelp beds for nearly 50 years. Efforts haven't been successful because they haven't uh, persisted long enough. People go out and, and transplant a few plants and walk away from it, and uh, the urchins walk in. The only way we're going to get kelp back along this coastline is if we actually do transplants, and that means a lot of work, a lot of labor, a lot of effort. Another critical step to restoring these kelp beds will be reducing pollution and sediment runoff. Since 1950, the population of Orange County is growing from around 200,000 to 2.7 million. So the coast keepers have started programs that enforce laws against pollution and educate people about their environment. Coast keepers realize it's going to take more than just planting new kelp to keep these coastlines healthy. For National Geographic Today, this is Ernie Kovac.